The reason for special meetings is to deal with matters that may arise between regular meetings that require action by the society before the next regular, regular meeting, or to dedicate an entire session to one or more particular matters. Special meetings can be properly called. <coughs> they cannot, again, let me find the exact words here. It is a single purpose meeting with proper notification. Those are the things that we kind of follow. But again, Robert's Rules of Order is not a law. It's a guideline. Um, I told you you need rest for this. Okay. Parliamentary law is, was created for a deliberative assembly, which is what we are. A deliberative assembly is free to do whatever it must to ensure these protections to all the members. And this is parliamentary law, 1995 to 96. Accordingly, each assembly must borrow and adopt Robert's rules as it sees fit. As Blair Fest suggested, all law is based on custom, like the common law, parliamentary law, and on and on. In other words, we have, first, our guidelines are our bylaws and our policies of the organization, the POA. If we need to, we go to Robert's Rules of Order. We do try to follow it. That's my point. Now you can wake up and it's your turn. <laughs> Okay, well thank you for that. So, um, so ultimately the chair is responsible for uh, the, the meeting itself, the board meetings themselves. Um, but having someone uh, who is learning and is in such a great advisory capacity as Nancy in parliamentary procedures is a tremendous help. So publicly I'd like to say thank you for what you do thank for you. us in that regard. Um, if you remember, you know that F word, right? The F word, fiduciary. <laughs> the F word, fiduciary. One of the three things is obedience. We are called to be obedient. Well, what are we to be obedient to? It's to these documents, to the bylaws, to the declaration, to the protective covenants. So thank you for that orientation to that and the proper sequencing and, and hierarchy of that. So, Wait, so that's great. So, so we are obedient. So anyway, um, I think we're ready to get started with the questions. Um, first up on the list is, uh, I believe it was Kurt Danger. He had a question with regard to board, uh, board of directors orientation. Kurt? Oh, yeah. Uh, just wondering how much the, uh, was it the psychologist for two days and the lawyer for two days cost? The cost? How much did it cost the property owners to have that two-day board orientation? Mm -hmm. I think if you'd like to stop into Leslie's uh, office and find that out, I think she'd be happy to share that with you. Um, personally, I feel that it was of tremendous value, not only to the board seated around the table, particularly the new board members, uh, but also for the, oh, it was probably between 10 and 25 property owners that were in the audience that got to see how it is we learn what we do. So um, within reason, I think it was very much money well spent. I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Well, we heard it was $300 per hour for the so where, where did you I, use? I don't know. We, we, we can hear that. that. We, don't have, we don't have. She mentioned it at the meeting. Who did? The psychologist did. Oh, I don't have a clue. She said it was $300. Yeah. Now, I missed that yeah, she so said I, that, but I'm surprised she would say that. But, um, anyway, anything else on the orientation? I do recall that Kathleen might have said, and you don't want to pay me $300 an hour to come and do this. Oh, that was in, it, it was, was an offhand comment yes, like that. Was okay. comment. Um, you know, we don't know. So if you know, you can tell us. So it's just uh, a blank check then? No, uh, no, Leslie's uh, responsible for making certain that, that the board is educated in what it needs to and brings the resources to us or at, or at our request to make certain that that happens. So then we have the management training the board of directors. Is, is that? No, is that what no, 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 no. Mostly, mostly it was Dr. Ruth and the attorney doing most of the training. Oh, uh, when we turned in some of the uh, topics on the training agenda, 
included operational matters, right? Like the functional organization chart. I mean, Leslie, of course, is the one that's going to describe that to us. Uh, but as you recall, two thirds, three fourths of the agenda items were led by uh, by our uh, experts that we hired. Can I say one thing about this? Um, the attorney that was there. This was an executive session. Uh, the attorney was informing us on, on legal matters. For two days? Oh, no, no. He was talking about the board, board orientation. About oh, the board orientation. Oh, okay. in late March. Oh, okay. He's talking about what? Yeah, yeah, she was there. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Oh, no. Okay. I'm thinking the last one. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Let me, let me make a statement about this. The three of us came on the board a year ago. We were in this meeting that you're talking about uh, probably almost a month later than it was this year. There was a month in there from the time we were elected to we were on the board that we weren't involved in anything. So when we had that meeting, it was in this room, Dr. Zier was here, and they started down at that end of the wall, came down here, across back here, and down that wall with information and history that she was asking us about to fill in the blanks, okay? That meeting made me understand a lot more about what being on the board is than we had an idea when we ran. It opened our eyes to the way things and some laws and stuff. We had no idea. So we recommended that be early this year. So a lot of that information that was up on the board was put up kind of like that last year, except this year it went more in detail all the way around. So I don't know what it costs, but I can tell you one thing. It was one of the best meetings I've ever been into. One thing I'd add additionally, Larry was very good to record two days of training for us, and then he broke it down into topical segments, and those segments are posted on the YouTube channel, the um, Osprey's Village YouTube channel. The best thing to get the greatest value for what was spent for that training is for those who are interested in the governance of the village to go there and particularly look at, at the first one, the one on the timeline. I think you'll find that especially valuable. Um, everyone I've spoken with who saw that timeline came away learning a lot more about the history of this village than they knew coming in. So that's just that was very good. Um, thank you. Cindy, Kathy. Cindy, there was a comment made several times during those videos because I was out of town and could only see them on the video um, that there would be handouts made available. I asked Ella about them a few days ago. I got no response. Oh. Well, are there handouts? Oh, okay. And the, there was a Village Digest that indicated they would be forthcoming. I will, I will make a note of that Thank you. Um, Thank you. to follow up. Thank okay. you. Yeah. All right. Especially that timeline. I would love to have a hard time. Well, they were waiting to get the finished product in. That, that one we were waiting on the finished yeah. product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Um, well, uh, otherwise, the, yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, According to the uh, governing uh, committees, uh, one especially uh, is the governing committee that is uh, the governance committee itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I was wondering about is when did that committee uh, come about? Uh, who voted on it? And why is uh, Leslie on that committee when she could be, she is governed by the board itself. So. That has always been something I've wondered about, if you could mm -hmm. say something. Yeah, that committee came about uh, the year prior to us joining the board. So I can't give you a precise date, but it was in the middle of that year somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Um, it was maybe in existence six to nine months by the time we were uh, brought on. And then um, uh, when I was seated, I was asked to be the chair of the governance committee. So I carried that forward. Um, since then, why Leslie is on really there's there's really kind of four kinds of governance. I've worked. I've done a lot of research on this. There's really four kinds of governance. One is um, the strategic uh, aspect of what we do, looking forward. Where do we want the village to be? 
going forward. That's what this retreat coming up. I'm going to do a shameless plug on that. May 1st and 2nd, uh, the board is having the retreat over in the Washita, uh building uh, where we normally have our board meeting. First day is executive uh, session, second day is open. And encourage you to come. But the whole purpose of that two day retreat is to wrestle with, as a new board, new, newly constituted board, wrestle with strategically where do we want this board to go so that we can speak with one voice to the CEO on that. That's one kind of governance. Another kind of governance is um, how does the board govern itself? What are the rules that we insist on living by? That's another kind of governance. But the third and fourth are the two that involve uh, the CEO. One is called um, executive limitations. It's the kinds of policies where we say you can't spend more than fifty thousand uh, dollars on on an expense without board approval uh, operationally. You can't spend more than a hundred thousand dollars on a capital item without board approval. It's called executive limitations. Well, it would be wholly inappropriate for us to make those judgments without her participation as to what those limits, uh, the pros and cons of setting those limits. And the fourth is. Um, uh, policies around how do we delegate authority. The board has all authority. The declaration gives us all authority. We choose to delegate a portion of that authority onto the CEO. So what are those delegation policies? So how do we limit her? How do we delegate to her? Those two things uh, are high impact to her and her role, and that's why she sits on the committee. But she's one voice of four. Well, that gives her the right then to be on the executive committee. Uh, yeah, executive committees, which are secret. <coughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. There is no executive committee. There is no such thing as an executive. You've probably heard that in other organizations, but we have no executive committee. But you might be referring to our what we call executive sessions, right? Executive sessions, um, which can be called by the chair, or as you read, it, I believe any two uh, directors and officer can call, call it. But there's very limited purposes by which we can call an executive session. And those are itemized in the open meeting policy. There's like, do you, can you pull it up real quick? There's like nine, of, nine reasons why we can go into an executive session. But examples include to discuss personnel issues, to discuss legal issues, to discuss real estate issues, to discuss economic development issues, the kinds of things that, should they prematurely be made known publicly, would be harmful to the uh, association. Those are executive sessions. They're special. They're special type meetings. So we have three kinds of meetings, basically. Our regularly scheduled board meetings, the special meetings, like to elect the officers, and then executive sessions is the third kind of meeting that, that happens. So got it there? Yeah. So uh, on the governing committee itself, mm -hmm. does Leslie uh, and vote on the motions to be passed to that committee? Yes, she, she's a voting member of the committee. She is a member of that committee. So um, may, I, may I mention one other thing? Um, she, Nancy comes to a lot of our uh, committee meetings, so she's as knowledgeable as I am. No, no. Another part of the executive session aspect with the CEO and the CFO is that she is the corporate secretary, and the CFO is, is the corporate uh, treasurer. So they are officers. they are on the board. They are non-voting board members with all of the rights, and that is in our bylaws and our policies of any other board member there. Uh, the CEO is also privy to any communication, and as we've, we've told you before, when you send an email to the board members, Liz Mathis and Leslie Nally are also getting that email because they are board members. They are non-voting board members. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a their officers for the... Yes. Uh, so who goes in non-voting board members? Uh -huh. The board does. And we did that in the special meeting last Wednesday. We said, who is the chair, who's the vice chair, who's the secretary, who's the treasurer? Those are the four officers of the association. And we did that last week. So the, the officers automatically become members of the board? Non-voting members of the board. Mm -hmm. Keep me honest on that. And it is in the, it is in the policies. Oh, it is. Yes, it's in the policies. Um, and I'm just on the right place to, to uh, I think it's in the bylaws, too. What? I think it's in the bylaws, too. Right. 
it is, it is. But yeah, you know, if you if you have a handy dandy edition of the policies near you, I'm looking at <laughs> as I know you all do. I'm sure I've right. got in your back pocket. Um, <laughs> Article 26 of, of Chapter One. I'm sorry, I just wouldn't hear this right here. Um, we can have executive sessions for legal matters, purchase, lease, exchange, or value of real property, security issues, and law enforcement investigations, and economic development negotiations. So those are those are our reasons. And as um, Cindy had, there's others others on in here. I'm in the policies, not the bylaws. Unfortunately, there's two policies that address it. You read the one that has a short list, and right. that's right. something we gotta we gotta fix because it's. <coughs> um, but we do state in the in the consent agenda, which is was another issue at the meeting. Um, in the consent agenda, we do state if there's an executive session with it what the purpose of that executive session was, if it was legal or personnel, personnel or what it was. Mm -hmm. So that we're not meeting just to, to be in the, in, in the dark mm -hmm. or to keep you in the dark. We're meeting because those issues can't be discussed in public. Yeah. They just can't be. Chairman Weiss did an excellent job last year of absolutely insisting that we not talk about anything during those executive sessions that wasn't the stated purpose of the executive session. I mean, he was dogged on that, and rightfully so. And I intend to be dogged on that as well. So, um, so that's good. But there, there's, there's a um, legalistic answer to your question, Linda. But then there's, let's talk about the practical answer. Someone that has the position of CEO is entitled, in my view, to participate in the decision making that will govern all of her work. I think they're entitled to be at the table and participate in the conversation. I think that's appropriate. Is that a new uh, policy that was just passed recently? No, uh, well, it would have come about as um, when they constituted the uh, committee in the first place. Like I said, that was partway through the year before we joined. So about two years ago is when we constituted the committee. And that's when, when you constitute a committee, if you look at the charter, there's one section of it that's called the organization, and it says who gets to be uh, members of that committee. So that was just passed two years ago? It, well, yes, and the board, only the board can charter committees. So yes, that was a board action that chartered the committee. All right. The next one, yeah, I call this lovely table right here, the, the ones that are physically fit. <laughs> <laughs> they're physically fit. And I, I would say all of you have this on the table. Uh, I think you could give, give some copies to some people. Um, they're, they're petitioning to get um, a person back, back to work. And as I, as I told yeah, them, we cannot do a thing about this as the board. But we can, we can get this to Stacy and to, to Leslie. It's completely operational. We don't hire and fire anybody in the village at the board. At times, in the village as a board, the only person we can hire and fire is the CEO. So we really have a pretty, pretty easy job of going to one employee. But anyway, this will get to the, uh, to the correct place. And then hopefully they can follow up with you. Are there email addresses on? Yes, you got your email addresses. Is there somebody yeah, in charge? Is that the position of fire? Yeah, explain what that is. No, uh, yeah. 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 That would be nice, OK? Uh, is, uh, who's, who's email? Who should be contacted? Because I doubt if you really wanted to contact everybody. But Stacy will probably be the one you're hearing from. What is the petition? What is it about? Yeah, this part oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I, I will she, speak. You speak she, because you don't prepare to speak. Let this lady have her okay. problem and you'll understand. OK, OK. Uh, just as an aside before I start, you were saying that you have no authority over this. But you did speak to two things that caught my ear. Ones that you have personnel and legal issues, yeah. and I'm not saying this as a threat, but I feel like if you hear what I have to say, there may be something that comes from that. 
So I would still like to speak to you and let you know of our concerns and let you folks know what's going on at the fitness center. Yeah, just a little touch of that. Well, be before you get started, I want you to have your say. But when we say personnel, it's either a personnel issue that Leslie feels we need to know about as a board because she is has full oversight, mm -hmm. or it's we have a personnel issue with her because we have one and only one employee. We don't initiate any personnel issues that goes into her organization at all. Okay. Nor will we. So I just want to make, make that real clear for everybody. Okay. And then you still send it. All right, I said I wanted to start with a quote from Hamlet when he said something's rotten in Denmark. Uh, but I found a better one that describes my complaint, and it's this one. A fish rots from the head down. But like the character in Hamlet, I see the history of some poor decisions being made at the fitness center. Something is rotten. And I wish to speak to it because it affects me personally and a lot of other people who are also very unhappy like I am. And I'm speaking on their behalf for the folks on that list and the folks at this table. There is a petition that was put together by uh, a member of our group. It only circulated for two days in a very small spot that you saw when the signatures are on 30 something. Just in a two day span of time, about an hour, hour and a half those two days. So it's just a taste of the discontent that was that was being displayed at that time. Right now, uh, I pay for use of the fitness center. I pay the entire uh, fee of the Jews that are there. And I was doing it to go to this class, which met three times a week. And it was very strong class and felt like I was getting my money's worth. Now, it only meets once in a week. And I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth, and some of the books do too, but let me go through all of that with you. Okay. For the benefit of everyone, can we be brief? Just yeah. be brief with this your get really real quick. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I understand hard times such as these require tough decisions on firings or reduction of hours, which results in loss of benefits. But allowing a, a lower level lieutenant to arbitrarily make these decisions along with limitations on how classes can be conducted or what the instructors can do within their classes with no checks and balances from their superiors is bad practice. And the larger question is, why would this happen to one of the best instructors that's at the fitness center? Okay, so I'd like to ask you to pause here because first of all, we're not the ones to deal with this at she all. She said that. And so um, let me ask you this. What steps have you taken to register your complaint with anyone in the POA staff? What steps have you taken? We have sent this position to the HR and the POA. Did you talk to the manager at the Port Nova Center? Who is that? Is that Shelly? I mean, uh, that's Stacy. Stacy? Well, no. Stacy is Stacey. the director of recreation. She says she's over Machi Bowl, too, but that's. Um, there's a, there's a manager at the Isn't that Debbie? Debbie? What? Debbie? Debbie? Is it Shawnee Cooper? No, Shawnee Cooper is your HR, our HR oh, director. It might be Debbie. I don't know. But yeah. there is a manager on the other center, which probably would be, that would be the best place one to start. <laughs> and let me use this as, as maybe a little bit of a teaching moment here. It's very important. Part of what we learned in training uh, the afternoon uh, after last week's board session, we. Um, we had uh, an HR lawyer speak to us as the newly comprised board, and he admonished us that the board needs to stay out of personnel issues. And we're going to, and so for that reason, I'm going to cut you a little short and invite you to uh, converse with those in the POA management that is responsible for the fitness center Start with them first. That would be my recommendation. And register your issue with them. Let me ask Larry. Larry, Larry do you know who Debbie is? Who she's yes. talking about? She's I'm the the about soon, yeah. She's the one She's the head of all the activities at the business. Right? She's the one that's just Okay, we do want you to have a oh, okay. resolution to your concern without a doubt. It's just not a board issue, and the board can't. Uh, involve itself in any personnel issue unless Leslie brings it to us or we have a personal issue with Leslie. 
that's our limitation. And that's what our attorney has advised us. Okay, uh, so I guess my question then, if I'm not going to get to give my little talk, which I work so hard on, it's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I need to know the networking that goes up the ladder that gets us to, if it, if it needs to be, to Leslie. You have a manager at the fitness center. And you say it's Debbie somebody. I think. I, I, I really don't know. I don't know. Does anybody know? We can follow up and get it back to you. Yeah. If no one in the room knows, then we'll follow up and get it back to you. Deb Johnson. What is it? Deb Johnson. Deb Johnson. Okay. Oh, and, and I believe she's usually on site. So you can, you can talk she's to her. Pool. She takes care of the pool. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, then from her, from yeah. Stacy and from mm -hmm. Stacy. Okay. Okay. Our fear was that we put these on the desk and, and uh, um, Mel, I know from Mel, Mel, and Amanda, Stacy, and and, the, the and we felt like they would go no further, and so yeah. far they yeah. have not. So we wanted to when make did sure that they didn't do that. That would be, a, you know, that would be my advice is to follow up to see what's happening with it again. Um, like Cindy said, we can't do a thing about it, so that's where you've got to start, and that's where you've got to end. Actually, you've got to keep following up with those people until you you get. Like I said, there's two sides to every story, uh -huh. and you may not be getting the full other side of the story. Well, we it, don't know. Is it so. illegal for you to listen to her? No, it's not I illegal, know. but I, I don't want to give it that platform because I don't want it to lead anyone to believe that that's an appropriate topic for us to become engaged in, because it's not. Well, because we can do nothing for you. That's right. We really can do nothing for you except give you this suggestion to, to go to the management and then and you've already done that. You've sent letters to these people, right? Uh -huh. We'll follow up with Deb, but Deb, the Deb said, and see what happened with it. And if we get no further, I guess I'm asking you, where did we go from there? We don't want it right up to Leslie. We don't want it to stop there. We don't want it to stop at the manager's position. You can take, take us to Leslie. Leslie. Yeah, ask to. We can go straight to Leslie. Then. Sure. I know. Uh, again, I I'd encourage you to please follow the chain of command. Don't uh, we'll go directly to Leslie. Mm -hmm. Follow the chain of command. That's fine. Here. Yeah. So uh, right. so that we won't be jumping. Yeah. Right. I, I've been in enough organizations where yeah. we don't go over to the. That's top. never fun. That's going now. Yeah. It's probably yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but do that and and come back to another meeting or just you know contact contact Leslie if you have to. You see that there's no disposition to your. Or no, no other answers. I mean, you know, there may not be a disposition, but there may be another answer. So, okay. All right, Jill. Well, I guess I'm you suspicious. I'm not sure I'm answer this. I mean, Jill. Jill, Jill I'm right? Yes. Yes. Hi. Okay. Hi. My question is, I've been around Ben about five years about the uh, east and west gates, the lettering on the brick walls, and why you can't read the lettering. Most of the time during the day, especially in the evening, around 4 o'clock and later, you cannot read the writing on the brick walls. It's a house no, brick no. yeah. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that, right? Okay. Uh, my question is, somebody at the east side did some penciling around the lettering. It looked really nice. It was red and blue and all that. It lit up. But I don't know, but it's gone. So I don't know if that was mischief or if the people did it. I have no idea. But it's like, right? My question is, is there going to be something done about that? Would the visitors come into the village and they don't know where the heck, I mean, there's nothing there. It just blends in. Mm -hmm. Do you have it in the budget? Um, I didn't. That yeah, it's, it's an operational issue. That's right. I, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I have asked around, 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 around. Can we have one conversation, please? We you yeah. asked me about that when before I was elected. Right. I, I asked Leslie, and I asked about that five years ago when it was done. And it's a horrible thing for people to come into the village, our visitors, and that's the first thing. Okay, everybody knows about that problem. So would you? Try to, I mean, I've called everybody in the POA about it. So, tell years. me specifically, who have you called? Oh, a long time ago. I talked to David Twiggs himself about it. Uh, I talked to Linda Mayda long before you guys okay, were so, so I talked to everybody. All right. And it was it was uh, decided upon, there were several samples, and I know this for a fact, of the lettering. It was decided upon by the upper management that that's what they chose. And right. It, it wasn't possible to see it. Everybody knew it, but that's what they chose. And five or six years later, 
it's still a problem. Right, right. So, so the best thing we're going to be able to do is, is put you right back into operations and ask. Right. Uh, so I would recommend possibly, I'm going to say Jason Temple. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, Jason Temple. Start with him. Chances are. And he says there's no money for it. Oh, did no, you talk? Not personally, no, not personally, but everybody I've talked to, so there's no money in the Oh, Jason. Oh, Jason. Oh, yeah. All right, very good. Next topic. John Murphy. So what are they doing about it? John Murphy. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The district court is not doing anything about it. The, the problem that she has identified is an operational problem, and it can be resolved on the way. I have a quick question. Is Trim in or out? The Tom Tom to say is not I'm not going to joke around topics right now. So I'm, I'm going to take these in order, and then if we have time okay. at the end, we'll come back. Tom Tom's a big idiot. Trim is gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, John Murphy is here. Oh, hi, John. And you had a question about Cooper uh, communities over the utility assessments. In towns where I lived before, the utilities electric cable, telephone, pay a franchise fee to the community for the right of way. And those funds are used to help fund the community. Mm -hmm. Since Cooper, as I understand, owns the property that is the utility easements, are they collecting franchise fees? So that way, that means Cooper is actually taking money that we pay for utilities into his own corporation. But if you want to speak to that, you might be a little more knowledgeable on that topic. We don't really know if there is a contract between Mr. Cooper and the electric or whatever the companies are. Uh, we, we just don't know. And uh, that is something we could try to find out an answer for. I think we have brought this up a couple of times ourselves. The cell phone towers. Right. And he says, you know, he does the cell towers that are on his property. He does get a, a reimbursement for that, which is a pretty good fee. But as far as what if he gets anything from the uh, first electric or energy, we don't have a clue. So we will look into it and, and see if we can get you that. I appreciate you might it. want to contact Cooper directly. To get the answer to that because you know it doesn't get answered directly. We don't have a we don't have a we don't know. So we're really not in a community. We're really living in a landlord's development. In some respects, yeah. Yes. We don't live in a community, we live in a landlord's development. In, in some respects, yes. That's true for his reserved property and the property that he. He also is right. <coughs> True story. Mm -hmm. And the easements. The easement rights. Right. Around the village and on each of our properties. Each of our properties. Yeah. Okay. What's next? Terry. Terry. Hey, hey, Terry. I'd like to make a couple of comments before I actually end up with a question for you. Uh, the CMP consultant presentation made it clear that we need a CPI of 5% a year just to stay solvent with current operations. Basically, he went on to say we need 5%, we actually should be paying $111 a month right now. That's what I drew from the opening night of the forum. Okay. Secondly, when the 13 articles were voted on, Article 9 stated that the board would have the capability, if it was passed, to assess up to 5% for the uh, C C C CPI. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that would have passed, we had the range ready from 2.7 to 5.0. With all the money spent on the campaign, we could not get one article passed. Right. Very disappointing that we couldn't get one. Right. That tells me the property owners in Hot Springs Village, do not like the direction that we're going. That's right. That's right. And That's right. short of that, uh, I know we got three new board members and everything, and I think everybody has to listen a little closer to see really what the people want. Short of threatening, the board threatening to open the gates, how do you anticipate 
going forward to get any kind of an assessment increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> First of all, we cannot, we, we, we technically cannot go back out for another vote on the assessment increase for seven years. What happened was, in the declaration, in fact, if you talk to Mr. Cooper or his people, he was highly in favor of that 5%. Okay? He, he even had a letter that he sent out where he was in favor of that 5%. And it was not going to be 5% all the time, but it could be 5%. So there was so much confusion, and we'll take some blame on this or when all this was put together. When they started taking the CMP and putting them with the declaration changes and everything, it just got way too complicated. People didn't understand half of it. Frankly, we should have never come out with that many, trying to make that many changes at one time. So we paid the price. But as far as increasing, the only thing we can do at this point is we could take a vote at some point and have a special assessment increase. But we're nowhere near what all the other communities are paying on assessments. And, and we, we need all the help we get. So that's, that's the best I can explain. Yeah. The special assessment thing. Uh, I, I would see the response to and then I'd like to spot, respond and then we'll come back yeah. to you for, for okay. a follow up as that. Uh, it was unfortunate that didn't pass because in reality we had a 2.7 cost of living index from the southern region which increased our fees by 1%. Now we as a board can do that every year based on the cost of living index by the southern region. So your, your fees did go up, but they didn't go up to 5%. This was such a deal, having a cap of 5%. The CPI could go beyond 5%, right? I mean, could. if you remember the days of 10 and 11 and 12% interest rates on loans, do you remember that? I you probably won't, but there is that possibility. So that was a, a, a deal, I thought. We needed... Our hope, I believe, if I'm correct, we needed about three and a half percent to stay even with cost. So we we wouldn't have even had to go five percent initially. Okay. Somehow we couldn't explain that, and and that that goes back to us. That's our fault. We couldn't explain that to the residents. Um, I, the special assessment is our only option, but again, that has to go out for a member vote. And that would cost, again, because it, it is a big deal, it probably would be a $50,000 election. It would be what? A forty or $50,000 yeah. election, because, because not everyone has internet. I know that they're looking into something like that. Mm -hmm. but, but still, at this point, our declaration dictates that everybody receives this via mail. Mm -hmm. So some things I want to make sure and clear up and make sure that we understand correctly. We cannot change the declaration for seven years. That's true. We can take a vote tomorrow, but the effective date for that change in the declaration will be seven years out. That's that's the frame. So we can do declaration votes every third Wednesday if we wanted to. <laughs> um, but anything that got passed couldn't take effect uh, for seven years. So that's that's a little bit of nuanced answer. Second of all, as a board, we can go out to the members asking for an increase in the general assessment for any amount, just like we did for two-tier, whether you like two-tier or not, but that's what the board did. They took advantage of the right to go out and ask the members, essentially asking them for an exception to what the declaration says, because the declaration said it could only go up at uh, CPI. So when you go out for a member vote on the general assessment, you are asking permission to make an exception to the limitation of the declaration. And that's what got voted in with two-tier. All right, so we can do that at any time. We can do it for the general assess assessment, or we can do it for a special assessment. 
All right, so all of those things are still available to us. What we were trying to get accomplished with the declaration change is to be able to increase every year without having to go out for a member vote. But also realize it takes a supermajority of the board to even do a CPI increase. That's maybe another detail that you don't realize. It's not a mere uh, simple majority. It's a supermajority that requires that. But what I heard in the basis of your question is, did we not hear the message? Did the board not hear the message? And so I want to speak to that for a little bit. Um, clearly, the board heard the message. We had a, uh, it, it's a new practice. It, it happened for the first time like last fall, where the board does a self-assessment, where we look at what are we doing right, what are we doing wrong. And the conclusion of that self-assessment came out four days before that, that fatal vote that took place on November 30th. And our number one issue that we identified for ourselves is that we need to improve the relationship with our property owner community. The relationship between the board and the CEO with the property owning community needs to be improved. That was our number one issue. So yes, we got it. We knew it even before that vote happened because of all of the conversations and letters to the editor. We got it. So what, have, so what have we done? First of all, I remember saying when we were on the stage at Woodlands, I remember saying very clearly that um, when that vote, if, if anything would have passed or not passed, when that came to effect a year from now, six of the seven people sitting on the stage had nothing to do with the process that brought you that vote. It had nothing to do with the CMP, the change in the protective covenants. You can be angry at that board for the decision it made, but by the time it would have gone in effect, six out of the seven of them would not have been board members anymore. Had nothing to do with it. So to me, it was a personal heartbreak that we sacrificed an opportunity to do some things that really could have moved the association forward because we were so very angry as a community about the path the CMP took and some of those other changes. We lost an opportunity. So yes, we have a big challenge. So how are we addressing it? A few things. One is, you heard me say, our number one thing is property owner engagement. Look what we're doing now. We're doing Let's Talk. We hope that helps. I'm going to start a monthly newsletter strictly from the chair. I'm going to send that out later this month. So you're going to hear from me. Those of you that were on my mailing list before, you knew I sent that out every month just as a board member. I'm going to do this as chair. I'm going to try and do that kind of thing. Our retreat, where we start talking strategically about what we're going to do, that's open. The full the second day is open. Please come observe. There'll be no public comment period. It's not a board meeting. It's a retreat. But we do invite you to observe um, so that you become engaged. Um, other things. Uh, in that retreat, you will learn that the, the prior board gave direction to the CEO on three major areas. One is mar a marketing plan, one is on deferred maintenance plan, and third is on a revenue strategy. It's kind of a, what now? Now that we don't have our 5% that we were hoping we would get, what are we going to do to meet the revenue demands of this association? That's the kind of thing we're going to be talking about in the retreat. So now we've got a what now, because she's on the hook for delivering a way forward yet this year on revenue, among, the, among other things. That's what I have to say about that. Now, would you like to follow up? Well, just a couple things, yes. Uh, on the special assessment, I mean, you've got to have to decide what you want. But that is one thing that will never pass because people do not want that unknown. They'd rather we could get an increase, but a special assessment is like at a country club. If you need the money, you just charge it to the people. And that's not going to float. Uh, we, have to, we have to specify what that special assessment is yeah. for. And then we have to prove that um, we're spending it only on that. So imagine a special assessment that says we want to get the coverage done. You know, let's pretend that's a few million dollars. We want a special assessment to get the coverage done. Then we'd have to use the money just for the coverage. And that would be also a vote by the non-resident property owner. Yeah. Yeah. All property, all Which property. is, I mean, the, the two-tier, uh, I'll admit I voted for it because I felt we needed it. I knew at the time we're going to be in a box. And we're in a box today. We got the two-tier, we got the non-resident that's not going to support us on a lot of things, and we got enough people that are dissatisfied in this village that aren't going to back it. Okay. And so what do we do? We spend 40000 bucks and end up with zero. Okay. 
Right. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. Well, that's what it would cost us if we did it. That's there right. are no plans right now to do that. That's right, because yeah. the revenue strategy yeah. hasn't come forward. Yeah. You're right, there are there are big challenges. We'll, we'll keep talking about that. But I guess here's what I would say. I don't want to minimize um, the angst with regard to what happened over the last year and a half. But honest to God, as a community, can we start looking forward to what we need here and what it might take to get there? And maybe, I don't want to say let bygones be bygones. That's too dismissive. I'm not intending to say that. But we are where we are now. And six of the seven of us sitting on the board had nothing to do, really, with where we are now. So can, can, uh, can this community begin thinking in terms of what it's going to take from all of us to get us from where we are to where we need to be. That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking you this community. Yeah, Pat. I was going to say, I don't think it's all of us. Okay. I think it's the board and the POA that have to earn their way back. Yeah, but, that's right. that's what, I mean, I'm not trying to speak for everybody and say, but it started in my mind with the increase in the two-tier system uh -huh. and the lack of trust there was not one element from anybody that spoke that was accepted by the board on that they could have put a sunset clause on they could have done a number of things mm -hmm. they did nothing they brought it they passed it, it took two votes mm -hmm. they got it passed what's his name sue and it stayed there and of course everybody hated him but hey he thought it was against the covenants i have to say that there was a lot of different opinions. Some people just didn't like more paying more. Right. Some people thought it was against the covenants. Right. There was a variety of things. There was a variety of things. I don't think it was really in the big picture. It wasn't the money. Because the difference between paying four hundred dollars and seven hundred dollars, I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but I don't think it's gonna kill me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Could, could I make one comment to that though? We weren't on the board at that time either. I'm not. <laughs> the the no, 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 Cooper's people didn't get anywhere. I thought that was the kiss of death, quite frankly. Now, he had some clout in, in relation to the things. You're right, he voted against our own interests. Oh, yes. And I'll tell you, you, in spades, mm -hmm. it was because of two things, the PO and the board. That's right. I think that's where people are. But I, I, I hear you, and I believe you when you say that, and I know it's largely true. But what has that accomplished? I, I, it, you did know, it reverse anything? Sometimes. Did it undo a wrong? Or did it just make us feel good because we expressed our anger? I think that's exactly. You probably hit the nail on the head. People were not going to vote for that board. And I'll tell you, anybody that gets up in front of me, and probably most other people, and starts using the word obedience in relation to the documents, they're done. Because we are a community. That's right, but, but we have a legal obligation to do that. You just don't have to talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't have to talk about it. If you have any CEO going before and talking to their, their folks, their, their employees, and hey, those people want to feel that the allegiance is to them. These people are property owners. Okay. I, I think that, like I said, the two parties that have to earn their way back. Mm -hmm. It's been too heavy handed. Do you feel that the steps that have been taken over the last six to nine months have been steps in the right direction? I think this. I think this. Number one, I think this year, in spite of you know having three new board members, I think it's the worst year. Because, and I, I don't want to single anybody out. The reason I say that is because of this corporation corporate kind of mentality mm -hmm. that talks about obedience and then, oh no, you don't like that word? Okay, it's allegiance. Those are the wrong words to, to use to what I consider to be people in a community. I feel like I know these people somewhat. We live in this community. Me too. Uh, Me too. And right. so 
I think that. Well, I understand that that's a uh, a word that is is a uh, dirty word. Toxic. Well, it's it's toxic, but we learned my that as a kid, you're obedient to your mother and your father. There's right. no. It, it's a kid word, and I said that's how we all interpreted most of us because we were brought up that way. Yeah, I I completely. So you can't. It's hard to to take that word and put it over here, meaning something entirely different and making people understand that. Okay, that's fine. I, my, yeah. my job, I think, is, is to inform. Yeah. And I inform that we are to be obedient to our governing documents. If that's an objectionable word, I, I really can't help that because it's a legal obligation, not a word. And so we, my only point in bringing it up was to try to support her in her comments. More no, I, I understand that. that. I think mean, it's a shame that the people don't realize that you're using it in a different way. That's why we're trying to be yeah. helpful here. Yes. Okay. 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 Fair Here's enough. what right. I think is going to get us back. This okay. is what I think. First of all, between the time of that vote in November, mm -hmm. we, the people in this city, voted against their own interests. Mm -hmm. They, and, and I don't think the board got it, to be honest with you. But anyway, oh, we did. I can assure you. Okay, well, yeah. it, 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 it's appearance. And I'm saying I don't think most people thought the board got it. No. Based on what? Just Nothing the, way, the way the village is. It's more divided than any time I've ever been here. I'm not trying to speak for everybody. But I think, uh, like I say, you're three people that were not on the board. That they wanted people that weren't on the board because they weren't satisfied with the board. Now we got three more people that are not on the board. And we're hoping to get to four to two, not to turn the ship 180, but to turn it a little bit because nobody likes the direction. I, 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 I don't want to use those words, nobody. Okay. But here's how I think we're going to get back. Okay. And you know what it is? It's number one, we have to walk a little softer, all of us. And the board, and, 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 and believe me, lose that word of meetings. The other thing is the way we're going to get back is one meeting at a time. That's the way we're going to get back. People are going to be in there in May, and they're going to be looking. Is this board a little bit different? What are you looking for? You give me some specifics. <laughs> First of all, we want to for something where we are starting to get some trust back. So, transfer. I'm sorry, was there something over here? Yes. As Trim in or out? Uh, we're not talking Trim right now, we're on his topic. Please, uh, we're on Terry's topic and we're engaging on that. I promise, I'll, I'll find a way to get to okay. Trim. Okay. You know, obviously transparency uh, is very important to people. They want to feel connected to the community. And, and that's one thing that's big. Is this helping? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. Think, I don't think, in terms of where it is, that not one day starts until that meeting. I don't. I. I know you've all been, and I've been to them. You've seen me there. But I've said every time, it's not going to start. Nothing's going to change. I applaud your efforts, but nothing's going to change until that main meeting. And pe that's when people are really going to start looking. Do we see something a little different? Can, can I ask a question of, of all of you? What what has changed for the worse in the last year, except for your frame of mind? That's what has changed for the worse? Yes. That's, that's I mean, what you need against you. Are the roads still pretty I can't see the no frame of mind. I, I, Can we grow vegetables in our yards? <laughs> the protective covenants have been around for a long time. We are in that area. Do you hear the message she's trying to ask here? Um, um, it's it's not like paying any more money. Fees for amenities weren't even increased this last year. Nobody's paying any more money. Your toilet's still flush. You've got roads to drive on. Your lights still come on. There's still bad TV. <laughs> what actually has changed in the village except for our, our thought process that everything's bad and everything isn't worth 
Harry Monopoly. I know. I don't think that's a description of anything. It's like, it's like either it's on or off. Okay, but so what's changed what in I'm your life that has caused you to if, feel this way? If, uh, if, uh, it's just this. I feel like the POA is very heavy handed. They they got a fee on everything because it's a way to to uh, make you know bring money. Uh, if you look at where the, uh, the water went from the time we came here, which is 11 years ago, it's way up there. I'm, I'm not objecting. It's not a money thing. It really is. It really is. And then I'm going to move on. You asked a question about what it was changed, the, the budget process, <laughs> and suddenly it was done with a supermajority in order to change that budget. Oh, it was yeah. done before the new election, just yes. before, as a matter of fact. And I just wondered what the thought process was with that. But did that affect you directly? It will. Really? Yeah. How, how do you think it's well, going to affect you? Well, you figure, you figure our budget is a living document and move back and forth. Mm -hmm. Now, if something wants to change on that budget now, now you need a super majority in order to change it. Mm -hmm. but, well, I'd like to comment about budgets being living documents. My viewpoint is considerably different. I believe we as a board need to do a much better job of making certain we've got the right budget in the first place. We need to have better financial oversight. We need to have better uh, formatted reporting. We need to be comparing relevant uh, information. Um, and we need to know that whatever budget is presented to us puts us on a path to the goals that are set for the association. We need to do a much better job. When we do a better job, which will happen this year because we just passed that budget policy that has steps that is going to improve. Won't get it out of the park, but it will improve the process. When we do that, that is that is one of those uh, executive limitations that we give to the CEO. Because we say, go run this place, but within these parameters. And she's going to headlong hire to do that. She's going to set projects to do that. She's going to be making priority decisions to do that, such that she put so much in motion that to change the budget is highly disruptive. It should be hard to change, not impossible. But it should be hard to change, and it should happen only because of extenuating circumstances. If it were truly to be a living budget, she would she'd be reluctant to hire, reluctant to take on projects, reluctant to sign contracts, because she wouldn't know if that budget's going to change a month from now, or two months, or five months from now, or when a new board shows up. So I want the camp that says those budgets, first of all, we need to do a much better job of understanding that budget before we approve it. And then second of all, I very much support that it should be more difficult than most things to change, and that's what the supermajority calls for. I, I totally agree with that concept, mainly because she has, she has planned her entire year based on that budget. It's not fair that just because the board changes by 40% every year, and there's absolutely no continuity in leadership, that the, that the actual organizational part of our village should be interrupted. <laughs> she set her plans, or excuse me, the CEO has set the plans to achieve the goals that we set out for her. Whether they were good or whether they were bad or whether they were not, not big enough, uh, too ineffective, doesn't matter. These are goals that were set out for her by the board. You can't just change it when a new board is elected and say, oh, by the way, we're not, we're not spending this 100000 on this. So will the people cannot change the will of the management. If we, no, of course if we can. vote in Just new not. board members, they cannot go against the management. Of course you can, can, but it's a, <laughs> think of it, it's a freighter. It is not a speedboat, right? It's a freighter on a course. So yes, they can come in the next year. Starting, so our whole budget year started in February. It started in February with a brand new budget policy that says, uh, we weren't overseeing as well as maybe we ought to have somebody to put in some uh, budget policy changes. 
That happened in February. In May, we're having this retreat that sets out the big objectives for the CEO starting in 2020. What are those big objectives? It can involve revenue, it can involve marketing, it can involve deferred maintenance, it can involve uh, building reserves, it can involve a lot of big things. It's gonna be the big stuff, the high level stuff. That's that strategic direction setting. And we can say, you know what, we're not doing discovery packages at the rate we want them done, we want them done more. Or we're not selling lots as much. We want to do more. It's the big things. That happens in May. Then she and her staff go back and they go, oh my God, how are we going to achieve what this board has set out for us? This new board, newly constituted board, including the three new board members, get to set those big objectives starting Wednesday of next week for 2020. Not for 2019. 2019's pretty much in the books in terms of of what to expect. But that's for 2020. So my goal, I, I pushed very hard for this retreat that has a purely strategic nature. And my goal was as soon as is practical, let's get the new board members being able to influence the direction of this association. Two weeks after they're signed in as board members, they get to participate in that. But no, to expect it to be reasonable that they can change the course of 2019 in any significant way that doesn't cause more disruption than help is probably not a realistic expectation. I thought, may I add one thing sure. to that? And, and I think this was even at the last seminar <coughs> that we can set these goals for the CEO and the operations. As the board, we have to furnish what it takes to achieve those goals. We can't say we're going to cut the budget by $3 million. Okay, you go do this now. <laughs> okay, we can't do that. It's we have to, we're responsible for giving her the equipment she needs or the CEO needs to accomplish the goals that we gave her. She has to have the proof to do it. Exactly. The CEO has to have the proof to do the job. Exactly. That's right. and that, that is the board's responsibility. So how are you doing in the budget? At this point in time, how are we doing so far, year to date? We're doing revenue good. and everything. We had a fantastic 2018. We had another clean audit. Woohoo! Another clean audit without a note, without a correction. We also had money. excess money to and added money to the reserve. Well, now yeah. that is but, but, but we deserve a lot of things, uh, right? Wow. How much it is for each year? We've done a lot. We, you all have done a lot. Well, we've, we've done a lot, but I'm asking how it, how it's changed your life to make it so negative. Well, that was that was the you know the, 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 the we didn't do that. Kurt, that's been around now for what three years, four years? Now? Yeah, and you spent it all last year. <laughs> oh, hell, we talked about that. Who just... else raised their hand? I'm here from the Nikki and Linda. Yes. Yes. we got to get to true. Yeah, we're going to get to true. I think the uh, misunderstanding comes from we as members who look at, okay, here's the vision of the goals, and then we have a budget which we can't understand because we look at on the chart according to the administration and what is spent there, but it has 44%, maybe it's 16 million, but nobody knows what management is making and how that is tabulated. So we have come up with thinking, oh, maybe a finance committee would let us be more informed about going, what to, how to understand the budget and using that budget so that we can move forward effectively without over expenditures or even uh, some budget uh, decisions recently made, you know, over things that we disagree that are not needed right now that we could use the budget more effectively for. Mm -hmm. So I think that comes with, we need more understanding in that respect. Where are, what is the direction? Because I think it's sort of, we, we don't, don't really know. That's right. And so can you wait until a week from tomorrow? <laughs> it should be a little bit more clear. And particularly if you could join us for next Thursday, because that's kind of where we come in for lending. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. And I want to be clear about this too. The first day I said of that uh, retreat, 
uh, is going to be private, just, just the board. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to be able to talk about any topic of significance to the association, irrespective of whether it's a confidential topic or not, right? And so there's just some things we just can't talk openly. So, um, and it's in the open meeting policy. So it, because those conversations will include those kinds of things, that first day will be private. Second day, though, we come in for a landing. That's where we take everything that we've turned over that first day and start saying, okay, let's start calling this down into a set of priorities that at least four of us can support going forward, right? I, my goal, I'm a consensus builder. I love to get people to common ground. I love for all seven of us to say, yes, I support these five things to tell a CEO. Probably won't get there, but I'm going to work for that because I think there's value in consensus building. It's just how I'm made up. I'm not a four to two kind of person. I'm just, I'm really not. I'm going to do my best to try to find where can we have common ground so we can all stand behind the direction that we give our CEO. But whether it's four to two or five to one or whatever it turns out to be, that's what it'll be. But then this board is speaking with one clear voice to the CEO about what we expect going forward. That's how it should be. The board should be speaking to the CEO when the CEO has an opportunity to be able to do something about it, right? So that's what we're doing. I'm, I'm very, I'm an optimistic, glass half full kind of person. I think these steps are putting us on a right path. It's not a home run. But one of the things we'll be talking about is deferred maintenance, where we say, all right, what is that schedule of deferred maintenance? How, how big is the hill? You've heard me say that in board meeting. How big is this hill? I, I hear how many we got done, but how many more do we have to go here is kind of what I want to know. And then what do we need to be saving in order to be doing it? That's the big things we're going to be talking about in the retreat. And I think you guys might be hungry for that. We really, appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate it that you did come out with these questions about that because it's really important that we understand that are we how much further in the hole or are we more than we think we are. Uh, we, we don't want to have that kind of thinking. It's negative thinking, but it's, you know, it's reality. And with 37 million uh, being available in the budget, surely we are using bonds like... Uh, uh, Mr. Blakeman had suggested at one of the meetings, uh, that might be helpful. I mean, it's all kinds of suggestions. I always give suggestions that we should all work together no matter what, but, yep. and let's just hear it and hopefully uh, something, uh, we think good things will happen if everybody listens and understands. Good deal. Terry, did we cover what it is you wanted to cover? Yeah, I think we're pretty well covered. I think, I think we get down to the yeah. point where you folks handle, uh, say, 10 items, and nine of you do a good job, and one we feel you fail, and what do we do? And obviously, you, you talk about the one you failed. Yeah, well. That's the way life is, you know. That's but, uh, the big bucks. Yeah. You asked, uh, Nancy said something about a few things. I think so some fun. places you really right. fell short last year, and I may be wrong on this, but. Uh, the transparency issue, I still think we have that. Okay. Uh, I made a point on the salaries, for example. I don't want to keep beating different things up. Yeah. But, but uh, one thing that I really thought was misleading, and I think if I know the truth behind it all, the survey, for example, in the pool, was not a very clear, honest presentation. And I got evidence, not on that, but on another survey that I want to talk to board members separately on that really concerns me. And I think part of our problem is the committees. Okay. What's coming out of the committees, somebody's not stopping things that they should be stopping. Mm -hmm. We're doing foolish things. Can you give an example? And I don't, I'd rather not do that. I will okay. talk to a board member on it. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, when you're ready to, to speak, I'm, I'm all there. So yeah. Okay. Who else? Um, Anytime. Yeah. Yep, anytime. Next person up. Oh, should we do Troon? Let's just not Troon. Um, yeah, is Troon in or out? Um, that contract comes up for uh, renewal this year, and the board hasn't uh, had any conversations about it. So it's a rumor. It's a rumor as far as I know. I don't talk to anybody about it. Well, no. they, they are currently still so so in the building. Okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah. The yeah. Room. Tom Toms are saying they're not, but, uh, you know, you guys know. And by the way, thank you for doing what you're doing. 
I mean, yes. people get all upset, angry, and feelings run amok, but you are volunteering your time. You'd rather be home in front of the TV and in the gym as eating bottom line. Okay. But <laughs> I think it's wonderful that you're doing what you're doing. You know, the it's big great. thing in doing this is that we on the board cannot take this person. Absolutely don't and take it if we can learn up. to do that, yes, you it can't really do that. makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. But I will tell you, sometimes it is very hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I think it's that acknowledgement of the click of the button. 
Yeah. I, I think that's what the delete button's for. I know. <laughs> they can respond immediately. I think you can set that up for you. I mean, they're good. The, yeah, there's auto responses. Um, yes. I can assure you, if you send it to board members at hcpoa.org, there's nine of us that are going to get it. I, that I can assure you. But an auto response that says thank you for your email. Yeah, that's the person we have. gives the person the confidence yeah. that at least that much happened. Right. But I think we ought to go one step further and acknowledge every email. But, but she's right, many of these that come in are unidirectional, right? They're just, here's my thoughts on something. And if you say, well, is there a question in it? And a lot of times the question is, well, what do you think of it? Well, that's not the best form to get into back and forth. It is email. Um, but when there's legitimate questions, when there's um, misunderstanding of fact, when there's um, all oh, of those deserve That's a good response. idea. <laughs> once in a yeah, while. That would be nice good. to hear once in a while. Yeah. All right. I can assure you, you'll get improvement in that this year. Good. Yeah. And I want well, to make, I knew it would happen. I want to make the good. I, I want to make the good practices again transcend leadership. You should. This village doesn't benefit from, you know, having a swing to and fro based on who happens but, to But unfortunately, leadership. there's been a lot of that. There has been, been a lot of that. that. That's why it was it's, 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 it's more the. Yeah, she had. I don't believe she's spoken. I had it, but since my question addresses email, also, I thought I could just kind of tag on to this one. Um, it's been suggested that when a question goes to the board or the CEO that is of interest to the community. Uh, for instance, when I ask a question, I'm probably asking for 10 of my friends, too, that I'll share that with. But is there any reason why there can't be a question answer format published so that you don't get the continuous repeats of question questions that you have to constantly answer and respond to? Some emails you probably don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but, uh, but I, I think well, we, we talked about that in the portal uh, on the website. I don't know. No. I'm not there. There's a little group for that to have emails sent there or questions sent there. Um, I don't know. Here's what I guess I would say. In my experience, I don't know that we get a tremendous amount of repeat questions. Repeat topics, yes. But the questions themselves tend to be unique to the asker. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you could you could put all that out. What I want to do with this monthly uh, chairman's e blast that I want to do is kind of accumulate what I'm hearing from people and then try to speak to it that way. Um, I don't know how well I'll do with that. I don't know. This is going to be an experiment on my part, but um, but I, I just think that's important that the community hears from the chairman from time to time. But to put every answer that we do, well, not that ever, would just be, um, not that ever. might be a little question, question practical. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, topics. Yeah, topics. Yeah. And I, I just want to say something. I know it's important to look forward and to, you know, be positive about the future. But I think it's important to look backwards too, because we moved here in 2008, mm -hmm. and there has been so much change for the better just these past few years. If I look at the timeline from when we moved here, I, um, I just recently had a conversation with Jane Hollinsworth, and she was delighted that some of the homes they're selling are going for more than the asking price. And wow. that the, um, that the, I heard that. The, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I heard it one on one. And, um, and she's pretty knowledgeable. She's, yeah, I would trust that source. Yeah. Um, and she was just very excited about the real estate market. Um, our financials are in the best shape they've been in since I've been a property owner. And I've been a property owner since the 80s. Right. So, um, you know, there is so much positive, And it boggles my mind that anyone can wake up in the morning and look out their window and see their nice streets paved, uh, know that they can go to a, just a multitude of amenities that are right there. Um, I think our board and, and our management 
is doing a fantastic job of trying to make us all happy. But we're not a 500 person condominium community. I mean, you can't keep every, you can't make everyone happy all the time. Ma'am, can I come give you a hug? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for this. <laughs> Well, and I'll just take this moment because Mary Ann Kennedy is a very special individual in this community to all of us because she just organized the uh, Hot Springs Village cleanup day that took place a couple of weeks ago, and so her heart is in this village, and she's she's putting her her she's walking the talk. So thank you, Mary Ann. Yeah, and then we'll come around and circle around. Oh, yes. Go right ahead. Uh, Anna Workman and uh, Woody and I bought the property in 1991. Uh, We've been here for 24 years. And I just want to remind everybody before I ask my question, if you don't know this, there was arguments over even building the Woodlands Auditorium. Why do we need a 600-seat auditorium? It was unbelievable. I think a story of So we've come a long way. We have another names now. I heard someone say Okay, let me jump in. Is that right? Sorry, I stood up on a chair at a board meeting. Oh, I, I, I guess that's it. Don't give them any. It's dangerous. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. I have a concern. We downsized from Village nine years ago, so we're on the east side. When you come through the beautiful brick wall and see the letters that cannot be read yet when the sunlight hits it, and then you come to the white signs that were done about the time of Diamani that are moldy, nasty looking, overgrown, need painting. So now we've had two signs with a bad message. Where are they? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Just you made the white post? No. The white the neighborhood the neighborhood signs. Community the name of the neighborhood. Yeah. The name of the subdivision. Yes. Yes. I've already gone to yeah. many yeah. times those were private to the subdivision. Many times they're private. They were privately built by the subdivision. Uh, oh, they no. collect really? I know it was us. That's, that's the they same. They these, were, these, these were signs that were done, suggested by either somebody from Arizona or California, which I thought was interesting that they decided that they needed white signs. The big, huge neighborhood, concrete, yeah. plaster, whatever. Like right. race or something. Right. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. 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 Their requests. That's, okay, I've already not. sat with Linda Mayburn, and she said that there was plans to have different organizations adopt a sign. If, um, you, if you get together with your neighborhood uh, party, they, they will chip in and, and read through that sign. That's what. I that's don't what, even live in a neighborhood that has a white sign. I'm saying it sends a bad message. It oh. says we don't care. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And you are so fit. <laughs> so you're saying Jason is the one? I would say yeah, yeah, because he's uh, street space, so right, and see where that leads you. But that in truly the, is an operational issue. Excuse me. In the past four or five years, we have had probably seven permits issued to certain subdivisions that want to redo their sign, mm -hmm. and they they. To get together as a yeah. subdivision, put up the money, they send it in to the uh, permitting and inspection department, get a permit to do it, and they go, they go do it. Well, then wouldn't that be some of a compliance issue? Should the compliance yeah. people well, out? Well, what you could do is call compliance. Exciting those? 922-5562. Two, 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 five, five, I two. got the number right there on my phone. And, 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 and yeah, you know, I don't know if they still do it, but I, you know, there's also a lot of things that go into that with, with blocking the entrance to a to a subdivision. Sometimes you can't see when you have to get out. 
there's a lot that goes into the location of that. So ACC has to approve the location and, 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 and everything else. I don't know. Well, I think Comisa recently fixed their white sign up. It looks real nice. They cleaned it up, pressure washed it, and then painted the white again. Right, which makes the other bad ones look even worse. <laughs> 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 it's like a new self and it's great. Yeah, oh, right, so what we got out of that is don't clean any of them. Well, I don't know, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I do have a, if somebody buys property in a village, who do they buy it from? The uh, storage unit places. Um, the commercial properties? Yes. Yeah, who do they buy it from? A lot of those are privately held. Private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I know there are a variety of owners. Because all of a sudden, we have, at Hans and uh, DeSoto, we have ugly storage buildings, uh -huh. building left and right. right. And I stopped him once and asked, when he was the owner, so it was a little embarrassing. Um, he said he's going to build 12 more. Yeah. At Thompson is something. Yep. Oh, Bob uh, Rourke. Yeah, uh, Mike Rourke. Oh, you're talking about out there where all the buildings are? Yes. Well, yes. They, they don't have any more property right now to build anymore. Um, they were cleared the upper level. Well, according to the last time I talked to them, they were out of, out of property where they could build them. No, they had to burn it and clear it in the fall, uh, up from the ones that are already built and they're building more. Right. Well, they are building one more out there, but I don't think there's room for another one. Right. Um, but that has to go through our oh, control, that's right? That's so they, they will tough. govern uh, what can be built and where. When someone buys property, do they say, I want to build a... Uh, 12 storage units? They can, they can say that all they want, but it doesn't happen until ACC says it can That's commercial. Yeah. yeah, that's been involved a long time ago. In fact, it's probably just leased for 99 years. Right. Crystal is tougher, I think. Is there a follow-up we can do to help them with that question? Pardon? Is there a follow-up we can do to help them with that question? Well, I'd be happy to, to, to get them an answer on something, but it's commercial property in the last thing that Tucker and Mike Christie told us, they're out of room to build anymore. They would like to have more property. It was Mike Christie <coughs> that I stopped and talked to. It was Mike Christie that I stopped and talked to, and he said he was, they were going to build 12 more. Well, he's got, to, he's got to have the property. The 12 more won't go where they are right now. I don't know if he's, he's got property out. across the street from Pops. I don't know. Building they building. have not come to ACC for a permit. But I, I was told that he's, he has a little property where he's going to build another building. I don't know. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, is, this is all of the privately owned property in the village that the people use with us and the ELA building. The very first lot of street. That was my final fact was who do you think owns this land? And it's, it is interesting because people people think we should be taking care of it and it's not our property. We shouldn't be going on it. How do we get a copy of that? I don't know. How did you get it? <laughs> um, I, I know people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you, so can we get a copy? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see why it would be against the rules. I don't know. Let me find out. And um, I mean, all of that certainly doesn't improve people's Trust. property values around. No, but that's what ACC is for, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not to let anything happen that right. is out of compliance with the protective covenants designed to make certain that ugly things don't happen in the village. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the... Um, so is ACC responsible for those? I mean, did, I had a near-death experience last week. I went to the visitor center because I had friends in from out of town and I took them to the visitor center. And I literally almost drowned in a pothole right in front of the visitor <laughs> center. It was horrible. It's, I mean, that's what our visitors see. Is that privately owned property or is that? Yes. Cooper, Cooper owns uh, If you look at where the big back. sign is in the middle of that parking lot, uh -huh. everything, if you're coming off of the soda, okay. everything to the right, Cooper so owns that. And the upper, and the right upper right. level Cooper owns, except the, the one that deals with the dentist office. Okay. 
the rest of that. Is, is That's our visitor experience, yeah. right? We were so concerned about the oh, okay. IAD. But they see that. Okay. Well, but do you want to spend your money to repair his roads there? Because that's no, what we have to no. do. He should no. Have but let me ask this, buddy, because I don't, I don't know the answer to this question. Our protective covenants, though, have um, criteria that our commercial people have to comply with, right? So is it not a matter of compliance, then, to send somebody out to a Cooper or any other privately owned property to say, you're out of compliance? Did they get red tag? I mean, maybe that's maybe that's what we need. They to came do. with the blue tag. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> there's also. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think that's something we ought to look at because. Right. I mean, there's that classic El Himador, right? Right by that. Oh, that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 It's going to take out your, you know. Yeah. I don't know why that's that. That's considered private property. That is private property. That, that, that well, is owned by the star. Yes. Well, all right, that's fine, but is it out of compliance? Oh, yeah. Is it? And if not, what do we need to do? I'll find it. Yeah, yeah I think that's good. I don't. Starter owns the other side. He owns the liquor store side. I don't know who Starter owns that. I think I Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Well, that was yeah. in the door. Well, bulletin board outside. It was a different store. Outside the restaurant is in such horrible. Yeah. Just it is an embarrassment. I wouldn't post anything up there. And it's even a one of those that need to look nice. It yeah. looks terrible. Let me ask this because I had this feedback yesterday. It's not the first time I've heard from this person. But some are complaining about um, we're being too heavy handed with compliance. People are going up and down the streets and red tagging this and red tagging that. And it feels like they just stop all and people are out looking for others to misbehave. Does anybody sense that in this yes. room? Yes. That yes. Compli compliance is too heavy handed Way at the moment? Way too heavy. Yeah. All right. Way too heavy handed. Way too heavy handed, but yeah. West End is very heavy handed. Some roads get driven every day. Okay, so I, yeah, I'd like to hear that. Okay, Terry. Uh, well, the compliance yes. issue, the only thing I've picked up uh, on compliance is uh, from realtors. And what you can allow, what you have to take down or can't take down on a lot you buy, and this and that. And to me, what I'm hearing, if that is all factual, it is way too restrictive. Yeah. I mean, if I want to build a house and I bought the lot within reason, I should be able to do with a tree what I want to do or whatever. Quite frankly, if I was building, they had to probably take them all out because they die half of them afterwards and cost me more if I brought in trees. I know. I so to set the standards and say this is the way it has to be is. Not the answer. All right, so so let me. I want to make certain people know. You know, there is a process for changing the protective covenants, right? That originates with the Architectural Control Committee, which evaluates which and whether certain aspects of the protective covenants need to change, and if, as a committee, they decide that, that is the right thing to do, then there's more people that convene to write up what that change is. One of them is Buddy as the ACC liaison, one is Stephanie Hepper as the uh, staff liaison, one is uh, Leslie as the CEO, and the other one is John Croning as the ACC chair. They get together, craft the language, bring it to the board, we approve it or not, but approve it, and bingo, the protective covenants are changed. So, if someone knows of a protected covenant that they feel is worthy of consideration for change, your first stop is with the ACC and make those uh, concerns known. It's not with the board. That's that's the last stop that these changes. One made. of the primary things the ACC is charged with is the aesthetics of the village. And you can, there are a lot of homes around the village that if you go look, the lots were totally clear cut and then they brought in all that gold rock or whatever they called it and that's all you had was rock so under the protective covenants now and it's been this way for quite some time you they it doesn't say you can't do these things but what it says is you have to have a percentage of mulch or plants or that type of thing and then if you start cutting the trees down they have a tree conservatory plan now where if you cut down 20 trees you may need to plant four or five back of some other kind. So it, it's meant for the aesthetics of the village, and that's, that's what it is. Do we have a compliance officer somewhere that we have two. What? No. Right. How do we get that person to come in? Do they have to be a 
property and say this is not right and yes ma'am every day but not a but not a neighbor now I, I because i was under the impression that it would be the neighbor or you know a resident who would make a complaint that there is no compliance officer we have two full-time compliance and they officers. Go around and look oh, they're, they're under the police department. They're under the yeah. police department. <laughs> they, they ride they the village every day. Yeah, they don't have to get a general complaint to, do, to issue a red tag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're they, can I, oh, no, Larry, sure. for a moment. He's been raising his hand and nobody else can see him but me. Probably not. Uh, I can give you a first-hand example of of some of the problems that compliance has. Uh, there was a property that I was not involved with directly, but indirectly because I was selling my brother-in-law's condo. And it had been abandoned two or three years ago. Uh, I talked to Chief Middleton and he took me into the compliance people we talked. And their problem is it's a HUD property. And nobody can find it. Nobody wants to address it. Nobody, it's just, it's sitting there. And I mean, I think sometimes we think all these things happen, but a lot of times our compliance people's hands are tied because they cannot get to the right people. And it just so happened in this situation, it was the HUD finances, I think it's up to about $6,000 behind in town home and property owner assessments. Yet, you know, because it's housing and urban development, uh, they can't, they don't know who to go to. And that's here in the village. I mean, you know, we, we don't think about that, but that's a real situation. Yeah. Can you give me the definition of a family car? Like, <laughs> what is the definition of a family car? I would guess it'd be an automobile that you and your family drive around in. Well, that's, what, it. okay. that's exactly what I would say. Okay. However, if you have a car that's sitting someplace for two months or three months, Twelve months. Twelve months we have. Doesn't have a uh, a batch. The full batch is gone out of the car. Okay, let me just interrupt you. Okay. You called nine two two nine two two six fifty five sixty two. I did. And, and, you, and, and you talked to Brenda. I did, and I've been down there three four times with pictures and um. I said something, told them to turn the car around so that the back is not facing forward. You do me a favor. I love this. You can send it to my uh, board address. Send me the address and, and what it is, and I'll look at it and get back to you. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm You're full of all Yeah, yeah, all right. You had a question, and you were raising your hand. Okay, head. yeah. Uh, if we're thinking about the aesthetics of the village, which a number of us are, and whether it be signs or cars or whatever, uh, and we're talking about buildings, and we're just talking about the commercial buildings, what about all these commercial buildings that Sauber has back here off of uh, Carmel and DeSoto back there? Uh, now, if you if you don't know about it, you should drive back there and look. These are fire hazards, you know. Now, I've retired from the fire department, okay, here in the village, and I've been a member of the International Arson Investigation Team. We don't have anything in the village as far as our fire department that has any roots to where you can actually do something. Like a, like a Benton or, or a hot spring. <coughs> well, so it goes about as far as you notice that there because you go out and do these fire inspections and you can write them up to, in, to a degree and report it because you have to do that for our fire insurance. Uh, it affects your insurance on your house. These are things that we have to do to comply with the paperwork, which is a lot of blah blah. Hasn't got a lot of roots other than just helps us with our records. Right. But having said that, we don't have anything that 
where we can get roots that we can actually find somebody and take charge of a problem before it happens. Yeah. Now, what do you know about that? Well, let me just say this. The, the process of them being fined is way, I mean, it, it's being done right now. So that's a challenge. I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you about it. But okay. it, it, is, it is well known. And there's some people trying because a lot of that building and everything that they have is about to fall down. Well, it's fire hazard too. Yes, sir. So I'll be happy. But there is some, something being done currently. Okay, good. 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 A officer to look into it. They did. Yes, and he sends back the report, and you should be able to see that report. I did. I did the first time I called. They told me the car wasn't in the driveway. Well, I showed them the picture of the and then I've been there about three or four times. But now I'm going to write it out. <laughs> Probably that wouldn't be a bad idea. If you feel the need to escalate, I think I'd escalate through that organization. My, that's my, the best my point is that if there's something going on in the village that bothers you enough that you're willing to report it, they have people that will look into it, and you can get, you can see the results of that inspection. Yes, I've asked that too, and they've been very polite to me. It just hasn't got the job done. But uh, you know what uh, I. I'm going away. Um, Who has any other questions? Uh, I'm referencing uh, one of the bylaws, uh, and it says on section two, the only actions which require a vote of the membership are a vote through election of directors, change in annual assessments, levy of special assessments, transfer of common properties, and changes in a declaration or of a declaration. Could we please have just one conversation? Thank you. Now, uh, we had voted on declaration and articles of incorporation. Why have we are not seeing articles of incorporation in this? Oh, here's why. We weren't, what the vote was about was to change our articles of incorporation's reliance on from the 1963 Arkansas statute for nonprofits to 1993. Changing the reliance from one statute to another did take a vote. All right, after that, after that happened, then if, if that had happened, then the board can change the articles at that point. We can get it. But we can't change, we can't change the statute upon which it relies without a member board. We have to take it to court to report it, but we, we can't amend it as the board. Mm -hmm. oh. And we can amend the articles right now. But we just can't change the statute upon which it's based without a member vote. And then what is the statute that it's based on? Currently it's on the 1963 Arkansas Nonprofit Corporation statute, and the vote that was put before you in November was to change that to the 1993 statute as amended. It's been amended several times since then. Oh, but in other words, and that was voted down. So, so we're still on the 1963. Oh, okay. So in, in order to change any of uh, uh, to get a new uh, article of incorporation, we as uh, membership still has a right to vote on that. It no, should, not to change the articles, only to change the statute upon which the articles are based. To update it. That's, that's, what, update. that's what you would be voting on. And that is something that we don't have to wait seven years for. No, we could do that again next year if we wanted to. Do that next year. That's what we to update. But, yeah. That's, that's another thing that very much would have worked in the property owner's favor, unfortunately, that got caught up in all of the emotion and the effort. It's another, you know, we Well, I researched the 93 Act itself, and it does take away the membership rights in respect that it uh, allows for the uh, board of directors to be elected by not uh, leaving ele election. It, yeah, they elect. In other words, as a board, you can elect uh, your own um, board of directors. It's clearly in the documentation. Oh, it takes away that right. All right, so I'm going to, well, I, I'm a, uh, 
I, yeah, I would, no, I don't believe that. that. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. But anyway, I'll, I'll give you a, a copy of it. Yeah, that's actually, the members have more, much more, more rights, responsibilities, and rights with the 1993 non-profit right. corporation. In fact, uh -huh. specifically, currently the board can change any bylaw. We're, we're empowered to do that under the 63 uh, statute. 93 statute, we could only change bylaws that do not affect member rights. It would have been very restrictive. Well, there was an amendment that was changed that was separate that, that gives the board the right to change without a member vote on, on the article of the corporation. Okay. we had to look into. Um, I know that there was, a, there was a, a, an opportunity to, to increase the size of the board. Which we can't do that actually now, but it's a board vote. But it's not a vote. Right. But then, if we were on 1993, it would be able to come in. But yeah, a lot, a lot more power would have my statute been in place back in the members' hands and away from the board. Um, and it, which means we would have had to go out for votes and lots of different stuff that we don't have to go out for now. So, do that how you like. But what else is on anybody's mind? I don't know if I've told you this. Oh, wait, no, I called on the lunch. She raised her hand. I'm sorry. I was just going <coughs> to make an observation or a question. Uh, Cindy, you were talking about uh, being a consensus builder, and we're talking about four to two, five to one. Traditionally, the chairman never votes unless it's to break a tie. Is that actually a policy or a bylaw, or is it just practice? And if, depending on what your answer is, <laughs> would you consider as the new chair to participate in all votes or some or all? Speak to that as a parliamentarian. How many of those are small boards? Because that would be what the what the blue would choose or what she's getting to is there are some uh, aspects of Robert rules that are relaxed merely because we are a board under the size of the club. So it gives us latitude that Robert's rules ordinarily wouldn't give us. So okay. she's going to speak to that. I'll, I'll try to read this very quickly. Um, procedure in small boards. In a board meeting where there are not more than about a dozen members present, some of the formality that is necessary in a large assembly would hinder business. The rules governing such meetings are different from the rules the pooled and other assemblies in the following as respects. Members may raise a hand instead of standing when seeking to obtain the floor and may remain seated while making motions or speaking, which you see that we do. Motions need not be seconded. There is no limit to the number of times a member can speak to a debatable question. Appeals, however, are debatable under the regular rules. That is, each member, except the chair, can speak only once and debate on them while the chair may speak twice. Informal discussion of the subject is permitted while no motion is pending. When a proposal is perfectly clear, all present a vote can be taken without emotions having, emotions having been introduced. Unless agreed to by unanimous consent, however, all proposed actions must be approved by vote under the same rules as in a larger meeting, except that a vote can be taken initially by a show of hands, which is often a better method in small meetings. The chairman need not rise while putting questions to the vote. If the, <laughs> if the chairman is a member, he may, without leaving the chair, speak in informal decisions and in debate and vote on all questions. Now, in a large board, for the, for the chair to speak, they have to hand the gavel off to the vice chair. Now, how, how Cindy wants to handle her board is up to her. But we've kind of been doing a combination of a small board, large board. I personally think you need a motion, a second on every motion, because I think two people should want to talk about that. But it's up to her. She's the chair. So that she can vote in a small board. Well, really, in a large board, she should be presiding and should hand off the gavel any time she wants to speak to a, a particular subject. Okay? So, my preference... Does that answer your question? No. <laughs> okay, let me read it. No, no. <laughs> no. Please don't, because you, laugh, you well, lost me after about the first sentence and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I have a short attention span. No, I'm just yeah. curious. So, as a consensus builder, I expect to uh, exercise that um, 
desire on my part through the retreat. It's not a board meeting, but I'd love to see us try to drive to some common thinking as we give our direction to the CEO. That's not a board meeting. That's what I meant by being a consensus builder. Once something takes a motion, it, it, it comes in the form of a motion, I intend to step out and I don't intend to vote unless I need to to break a tie. I, I want to kind of do it the way why, that why is, is that? Because frankly, I personally would like to know. I, I, I know how everybody else voted on something, but I, I never know how the chair feels about it unless it's a case of well, breaking it down. Again, it, it, it's her, her choice, and she just told you what her choice was, is that the only time she chooses to vote is to make or break a tie. That's, that's when, you know, large And vote. I'm just expressing my right. opinion. If you want to know how she feels about yeah, that, just like I want to know how Nancy does, and Buddy does, and Mike, and each of you. Well, you there's some problems. It's just a comment. <laughs> Or, you know, where you'll see me too trying to drive for consensus is when uh, something gets introduced as new business um, in a meeting, which means it's not going to be voted on that day. That's our period of discussion. So I intend to try to um, contribute to the discussion while it's not in motion state. When it gets in motion state, I'm going to step back and let the board do it as it's always done. I don't see the need to change that at this time. I think how the board could help with the communications with the community too, because I've been going to board meetings off and on for 19 years, and I've seen it go from uh, people wanting to speak. I've only been up maybe six times in 19 years. I don't make a habit of going up there. But on the other hand, it started out at five minutes a person twice a month. Then we went to three minutes uh, twice a month. And then we got down to two minutes, and then we got down to one meeting a month. Mm -hmm. We're not giving the people, if you really have a little subject, time to give your name and your address in a minute and 45 seconds or less, it's pretty hard without an extra minute or something. And you, they've been pretty good about giving it to you. But I think the way it's been cut down, if you really want communications and feedback, give somebody three minutes or something, then you probably do. But well, it's really cut off. That's the second thing I put in front of uh, the other board members over the last couple of days is, excuse me, a meeting decorum, uh, content that I'd like to see developed as policy. Once again, so that it doesn't, it doesn't just fluctuate with whoever happens to be at the helm. I, now, I, I heard Nancy say, yeah, that we need to allow for a little bit of that. But I think there's also value in continuity from a property owner's relationship standpoint that you come to know what to expect when you address the board. And so I did some research on that as well, came up with uh, something that I thought might work for us. It's out for their commentary, but I'd like to see that introduced as policy. But one of the elements there is I do want to go to three minutes. Um, but we're also going to be a bit more stern, I think, uh, and appropriately so, with regard to the uh, quality of the commentary that's made to the board. Sometimes it becomes disrespectful, and it, it cannot be disrespectful. Um, there um, is an expectation often that you come to the board, addressing the board, expecting an answer to a question. No, it, the purpose of public commentary is for you to inform us so that, uh, so that we can make better decisions. So you tell us your opinion, whatever, but not to ask a question about well, why isn't this done, why isn't that done, and expect an answer. We can deal with that offline. So you're going to see some of this, and what we do is we're patterning after municipalities and how they run their public commentary period uh, in their uh, city council meetings. Um, but yeah, essentially that's your opportunity to share your opinion in one direction. We will thank you for having that itself. But an expectation that answers uh, are provided in the context of the meeting is probably an unrealistic one. But we should take that aside and get answers back to the uh, questioner at some later date. And I told Tom Weiss last year in an email, it works in the reverse. The property owner deserves respect too. Yes, that's that's very true. Has this been respectful today? Very much. Yes. So. Okay, very good. Good. We'll try to keep it up then. Good. What else? Because you heard my alarm go off. That was my five-minute warning. Yeah, I see. You 
can wrap this up here. Okay. So what do the people in this room think that the board can do differently to make things better? More transparent? Better. Well, I think this is an example. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, I don't know whose idea it was. Ours. <laughs> it's it's I'm not sure I don't like it that you're not going to vote, though. Oh, because if I voted for you, don't worry, she's going to be voting plenty this year. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't <Be> you prepared. worry. <laughs> I'm going to plenty of opportunities. So. Are there going to be any more of these? Yes. Once a month. Oh, once a month? We're yeah, rotating is, in the new board members. The next been, one will be May 25th. We've been 25th. waiting for the new board members oh. to learn a little bit more. Oh, oh that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the last one because no. 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 Oh, I've got so, my hand on the phrase. Well, yeah. I think the next <laughs> one is May 25th. Right, May 25th. And it at, will at be the at the DeSoto Club at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's the Saturday. That's the Saturday. That's the Saturday. Memorial Day weekend. Oh, yes. That's pointed out to us Saturday. Oh, but yeah, we're going to do once a month. We do it in three different venues at three different times of the day. This is the evening oh, one here. We do a morning <laughs> one at DeSoto and an afternoon one at Granada. So we're going to keep that rotation going in. It'll be a different mixture up here every time. And it's important to note, um, I try to make this point every time, but we are only three board members up here. We are not a quorum. Nothing you heard today represents any action or decision on the part of the board. You heard the